be seated. Your next witness. Your Honor, our next witness is Adam Waldman, and I will start the questioning, and then Mr. Rottenborn uh, split that with me, and we'll be questioning next, and then it will be Mr. Depp's counsel. All right. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Elaine Bredehoff, and together with Ben Rottenborn, we represent Amber Laura Hurd. Will you please state your name and address? Sure. It's Adam Robert Waldman, Washington, D.C. And what is your current occupation? Attorney. Uh, I'm also involved with a skincare company in a variety of capacities. How long have you been an attorney? Uh, I think since 1995. Do you currently represent John C. Depp II, who I will be referring to in this deposition as Mr. Depp or Depp? I do. And is this representation an attorney-client representation? It is. Does it include any other type of representation of Mr. Depp other than as an attorney-client? Uh, I would instruct the witness not to answer that question on the grounds of attorney-client privilege, an attorney work product. You can't answer that question without disclosing uh, communications between himself and his client, Mr. Depp. As you're aware, Ms. Bredehoff, the court has ruled that Mr. Depp has not waived attorney client privilege and will not be waiving attorney client privilege. So you're aware of that. So, Mr. Chu, I I'm not sure that you heard my question. I was actually asking him if he had any other type of representation relationship with Mr. Depp other than as an attorney client. I think he can answer that yes or no, but I would, I would instruct the witness on behalf of Johnny Depp not to disclose any communications you've had with your client. No. So just so we're clear, since we had a little bit of record back and forth, um, the only way in which you represent Mr. Depp is as an attorney-client representation. Is that correct? I'm sorry, Mr. Waldman? I believe that's true. Okay. Um, and you are here today providing this deposition under a subpoena and then subsequent notice, correct? Yes. And when did you first become Mr. Depp's counselor? I think that it was around October 2016. And what is your role in this case as counsel for Mr. Depp? Objection. Sure. Uh, and I would instruct the witness not to answer that question. Okay, I'll follow the instruction. When did you first meet Mr. Depp as opposed to first start representing him? I first met him in October of 2016. How is it that you came to meet Mr. Depp? The general counsel that I referenced a moment ago asked me to go and uh, have a meeting with him, with Mr. Depp, and to talk about a financial problem that he was having. Did you enter into a written representation agreement with Mr. Depp when you began your representation? I would instruct the witness not to answer that question that calls for attorney-client privilege. Okay, I follow the instruction. Have you entered into more than one representation agreement with Mr. Depp during the course of your representation? Same instruction not to answer. He can't answer that without disclosing attorney-client communications and attorney work product. Mr. Waldman, when did you consider your attorney-client relationship with Mr. Depp to have begun? I believe it began the night <clears throat> I met him, actually. Sometime in October 2016? Yes, ma'am. Has the relation, has the attorney-client relationship between you and Mr. Depp been severed at any point between October 2016 and the present? Would instruct uh, the witness not to answer that question uh, on the grounds that you can't answer that question without disclosing attorney-client communications. Okay, I accept the instruction. 
as Mr. Depp's attorney, you have a pri you have provided him with advice. Is that fair to say? That's correct. Okay. And you have charged Mr. Depp for your advice, correct? I would instruct the witness not uh, to answer that question. You can't answer that without disclosing attorney uh, client communications and the fee arrangement in any event is uh, irrelevant but I'm instructing him not to answer on the grounds of privilege. I accept the instruction. Mr. Waldman, when you provide legal services in an attorney-client relationship, your understanding of that is that you provide advice and your client in turn compensates you in some manner. Would that be fair to say? Yes, as a general matter, that's, that's how I understand an attorney-client relationship, yes. And has Mr. Depp paid you <coughs> advice? I would instruct, uh, I do instruct the witness not to answer on the grounds of attorney client privilege. You can't answer that question without disclosing your communications with Mr. Depp. I accept the instruction. Well, let's go general again and see if maybe we can work at it from that perspective. So in, in your relationship with your clients, you provide advice and it's up to the client to determine whether to follow that advice. Would that be fair to say? As a general matter, I do agree with that statement, yes. All right. Uh, and by the same token, it would be up to the client to determine whether to reject your advice in whole or part, correct? You're still speaking in general. Correct. In general, yes. Okay. Now, did you, did your relationship with Mr. Depp, and I'm talking about your attorney-client relationship, deviate from those general principles that in some way Mr. Depp is not permitted to follow or reject your advice? Would instruct the witness not to uh, answer the question based on attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Now, Mr. Depp has the right to terminate your representation at any time. Is that correct? But yes, I think it's true. Okay. I think Depp we need to let... would be free to uh, terminate at any time. My apologies, Mr. Waldman. I didn't realize you were still talking. D did you finish? Yes, I did. Thank you. Now, has Mr. Depp terminated your representation of him at any time between October 2016 and the present? That's the same question that... Uh, I instructed Mr. Waldman not to answer before, just stated in a slightly different way, so I would instruct the witness not to answer that question. I accept the instruction. Now, and Mr. Depp, as the client in your relationship, is in the position to make the final decision regardless of your advice. Would you agree? I, I would instruct the witness not to answer that question. I don't know that he, well, I know he can't answer that question without disclosing communications with Mr. Depp. So I instruct the witness not to answer. I accept the instruction. Mr. Waldman, if you were advising a client in an attorney-client relationship uh, and you were in settlement negotiations, would it be you or the client who has the ultimate decision-making ability? But to speculate about the question, yes, generally, the client would be responsible for deciding, you know, the ultimate outcome of the settlement. Yes. Now, you met Mr. Depp after he and Amber Heard had split up. Is that correct? That's correct. And you met Mr. Depp after he and Amber Heard had reached a settlement in their divorce. Is that correct? That's my understanding. So you have no personal knowledge of anything that went on during their marriage. Is that fair to say? Well, it depends what you mean by personal knowledge. I wasn't there. That's what you mean. Correct. You never witnessed any interaction between Mr. Depp and Amber Heard prior to October 2016. Is that correct? That's correct. And you have no personal knowledge of any conduct by either of them against the other prior to October 2016. Is that correct? Again, if you're asking me, do I have any knowledge of their conduct? I think I have knowledge of their conduct. I think maybe you're asking me, did I witness conduct? 
I'm asking <laughs> personal knowledge, which would mean you would have had to have witnessed it. If you're asking whether I've witnessed it, the answer is no. Now, your initial knowledge of the relationship between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd was based on your interviews with Mr. Depp. Would that be fair to say? I, I would instruct the witness not to answer that question because he can't even answer yes or no without disclosing the substance of communications with his client, Mr. Depp. I accept the instruction. Once you came into Mr. Depp's life and became his counsel, Mr. Depp filed with your assistance a number of lawsuits. Would you agree? Yes. Did Mr. Depp terminate Tracy Jacobs as his agent before or after you became Mr. Depp's counsel? Mr. Walden, I would instruct you not to answer that question if doing so would require you to disclose any communications you had with Mr. Depp. It would. How long had Tracy Jacobs been Mr. Depp's agent at the time Mr. Depp terminated Tracy Jacobs? And again, Adam, same instruction to the extent that answering the question requires you to disclose communications that you had with Mr. Depp, I would instruct you not to answer the question. It would. Was it Mr. Depp's decision to terminate Tracy Jacobs? Again, I would instruct you not to answer that question because that could only have come from Mr. Depp in the communication with you. I accept the instruction. After you began representing Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp filed a lawsuit against Joel Mandel, Mr. Depp's former business manager, correct? That's correct. And you represented Mr. Depp in that lawsuit against Joel Mandel and his company, did you not? I did. But it was Mr. Depp's decision on whether to file the lawsuit against Mr. Mandel and his company, would you agree? I would instruct the witness not to answer that question because it would require disclosure of communications between Mr. Depp and Mr. Waldman as to who was advising who as to filing the case against TMG and the Mandel brothers. So I would instruct you not to answer that. I accept the instruction. Did Mr. Depp have the ultimate decision making ability with respect to the lawsuit against Mr. Mandel and his company? And again, I would instruct you not to answer to the extent it requires you to disclose attorney client communication. It would. After you began representing Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp filed a lawsuit against Jake Bloom, Mr. Depp's former attorney, correct? That's correct. And you represented Mr. Depp in that lawsuit against Jake Bloom and his law firm, did you not? I did. But it was Mr. Depp's decision on whether to file the lawsuit against Mr. Bloom and his law firm, is that correct? Again, I would instruct the witness not to answer to the extent it requires him to disclose attorney client communication. It would. And Mr. Depp, though, was the ultimate decision maker in connection with any decisions made in the litigation against Mr. Bloom and his law firm, would you agree? Same instruction not to answer. It's basically the same question gussied up a bit. So same instruction not to answer. I accept the instruction. After you began representing Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp filed a lawsuit against the Sun newspaper and its editor in chief, Dan Wooten, correct? Correct. For purposes of this deposition, I may refer to the lawsuit against the Sun and its editor, Dan Wooten, as the UK lawsuit or the UK litigation. Will you understand those references to mean this? I will. What was your role in the UK litigation? I would instruct the witness not to answer that question because it necessarily requires him or would require him to disclose his communications with his client, Johnny Depp. It would. 
You represented Mr. Depp throughout the UK litigation, correct? Again, I would, I would. And Mr. Depp alleged in the UK litigation that the son and Dan Wooten had committed libel by accusing Mr. Depp of being a quote, wife beater, end of quote, and committing de domestic violence against Amber Heard, correct? That's true. It was Mr. Depp's decision on whether to bring the UK lawsuit against the son and Dan Wooten, correct? And again, I would instruct the witness not to answer any any, um, I would instruct him not to answer because it for force would require him to disclose attorney client communications as to the thought process that went into filing that particular lawsuit. I accept the instruction. After you began representing Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp filed suit against Amber Heard, his former wife, correct? That's correct. And you represented Mr. Depp in the lawsuit against Amber Heard from March 1, 2019, up until October of 2020. Is that correct? Yes. And it was Mr. Depp's decision on whether to file the lawsuit against Amber Heard. Is that correct? Would instruct the witness not to answer that question based on attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. And Mr. Depp is alleging in this lawsuit that Amber Heard defamed him by suggesting that he had committed domestic abuse against her, correct? Yes. As part of your representation of Mr. Depp, you contacted potential witnesses, is that correct? Again, I, I would, that is attorney work product and that is protected uh, in Virginia. So I would object on that basis, but you can answer that question, yes or no. Yes. You also spoke with the press on Mr. Depp's behalf, did you not? And I would instruct the witness not to answer to the extent that it requires um, disclosure of any communications between yourself and Mr. Depp. It would. And therefore? And therefore I accept the instruction. How frequently did you communicate with the press on Mr. Depp's behalf? I would instruct the witness not to answer that question because it's um, impossible to do so without disclosing attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Why did you communicate with the press? Same instruction not to answer on the same grounds. I accept the instruction. <laughs> what were you hoping to gain? Same instruction not to answer the question. I accept Basically. you. You remain Mr. Depp's primary counsel for all of his affairs. Isn't that correct? I, I, I'm going to instruct the witness not to answer that because I don't think you can answer that without disclosing your communications with Mr. Depp. And we have to be consistent. That, that's true. And I accept the instruction. Mr. Waldman, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as exhibit number three. Did there come a time in 2018 that you contacted Rolling Stone about writing an article about Mr. Depp? And to the extent that you cannot answer it without disclosing communications with Mr. Depp, I would instruct you not to answer. I think it would implicate discussions with Mr. Depp, so I accept your instruction. The author of this article, which was published on June 21, 2018, is Stephen Roderick. Were you present when Mr. Roderick interviewed Mr. Depp? You may answer that question, yes or no. It's not yes or no, I was there for some of it. Okay. Was the Rolling Stone interview before or after Mr. Depp filed suit against the son and Dan Wooten? I'm not sure. Do you recall whether the publication of this Rolling Stone article was before or after Mr. Depp filed the lawsuit against the son and Dan Wooten? I don't.
I'm going to ask you to take a look at page 10. And it says on page 10, it was Adam Waldman who first contacted Rolling Stone about writing a story about the injustice of being, injustice being done to Depp's reputation and bottom line. You see that? I, 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 well, before you go there, Mr. Waldman, I asked you a question. I just read that and said, do you see that? Would that, can you answer that question? I, I thought I answered yes, but yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and is that an accurate statement? No. What is inaccurate about it? It says it was Adam Waldman who first contacted Rolling Stone. That's incorrect. What is correct? What is correct is that I was not the first to contact Rolling Stone. Who first contacted Rolling Stone? Mr. Depp. I'm going to ask the question, notwithstanding, why did Mr. Depp contact Rolling Stone? I would instruct you not to answer that question. I accept the instruction. Did Mr. Depp authorize you to have communications with the Rolling Stone to set up this interview? Instruct you not to answer that question on the grounds of attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Did you assist Mr. Depp with publicity uh, on Mr. Depp's behalf? I would instruct, I would instruct you not to answer on the grounds of attorney-client communications. I accept the instruction. In your view, does assisting Mr. Depp with publicity constitute legal work? Um, the witness has already testified he had one engagement for Mr. Depp, and that was a legal engagement. So I'm going to instruct him not to answer any questions about his communications with Mr. Depp. I accept the instruction. In participating in the interview with the Rolling Stones, were you speaking on Mr. Depp's behalf? And I, I'm going to instruct not to answer because, again, I don't think you can answer that question without <clears throat> disclosing your communications uh, with Mr. Depp about authority. So I'm instructing you not to answer the question. It was Mr. Depp's choice whether you said anything to the press relating to Mr. Depp. Would you agree? Instruct, no, I instruct the witness not to answer. I accept um, Mr. Waldman, you reached out to a number of other publications to speak on Mr. Depp's behalf. Do you recall? Again, I would instruct not to answer to the extent it requires you to disclose communications that you had with Mr. Depp. It would, and I accept the instruction. How many publications did you communicate with on behalf of Mr. Depp? Same instruction not to answer based on attorney-client privilege and attorney work product. I accept the instruction. <clears throat> How many publications did you reach out to on Mr. Depp's behalf relating to the UK litigation? Same instruction not to answer on the same grounds. I accept the instruction. How many publications did you reach out to on Mr. Depp's behalf relating to this litigation? Same instruction on the same grounds. I accept the instruction. How many publications did you reach out to concerning allegations that Mr. Depp had abused Amber Heard? Same instruction, same grounds. I accept the instruction. Mr. Waldman, you had a Twitter account, did you not? I did. When did you begin that Twitter account? I'm not sure of the date. Approximately when? I'm not even sure of the year. Was it prior to 2005, <coughs> 2010, 2015? Do you want me to speculate? I, I want you to give me your best estimate. Okay. I'm, I'm really not sure of the year. I, I couldn't put a specific date on it. Do you, if, you recall? If you want to give me ranges, many, I could try. Do you recall how many years you had the Twitter account? Not precisely, no. Was it more than a year? I think so. Was it more than three years? I don't think so. Now, you had your Twitter account suspended, correct? Y yes, that's true. My Twitter account was suspended. 
Do you recall when that was? Not with specificity, no. Do you recall why? Well, I wrote several letters to Twitter to ask why I was suspended for life from their platform. And the response that I received was uh, multiple violations of their policy. So I asked, could they name one example of those multiple violations? And they responded by saying, now they were appealing without my asking them to do so, my suspension. And that's when they sent me another note that I was suspended for life. So just so the record's clear, so you have been suspended for life by Twitter? Yes. Okay. Do you have a Twitter account now? No. Do you still communicate with the press relating to Mr. Depp? And I would instruct the witness not to answer the question to the extent that it requires you to disclose communications between you and Johnny. It would, so I accept the instruction. Do you still communicate with the press on Mr. Depp's behalf? Same instruction, uh, same grounds. I accept the instruction. Has Mr. Depp ever asked you not to speak to the press? Same instruction, same grounds. That clear, on its face, it, it would require Mr. Depp, Mr. Waldman to disclose his communications with Mr. Depp, which he will not do. It, it would, and I accept the instruction. Would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press? I will instruct the witness not to answer because it's an end around the attorney-client privilege. Clever, but I'm going to instruct the witness not, witness not to answer. I accept the instruction. Has Mr. Depp ever asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving he and Amber Heard? would instruct the witness not to answer the question on attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak with the press about issues involving he and Amber Heard? Well, and I will instruct not to answer on the grounds of attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Has Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements you made to the press relating to Mr. Depp or Mr. Her or Amber Heard? Would instruct the witness not to answer on the grounds of attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you to correct or retract any statements you made to the press relating to Mr. Depp or Amber Heard? Same instruction, same grounds. And I accept the instruction. Have you ever asked the press to correct or retract any statements you have made to the press relating to Mr. Depp or Amber Heard? I'm, I wanna make sure I understand the instruction. Are you saying you instruct not to answer in the event it implicates privileged conversations with Mr. Depp? Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna instruct not to answer. Okay, thank you, I understand, I accept the instruction. Mr. Waldman, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as exhibit number four. I think I'm going to try to blow it up just a touch. It looks kind of hard to read. Okay. Um, and it's a, uh, it, it's an article from July 3, 2020. For Mail Online. This is Daily Mail Online. Do you see that? I do. No, no, actually, uh, if I'm just going to go to page eight, I'm going to ask you to take a look at the following. It says, Adam Waldman, Depp's lawyer, said afterwards, quote, Amber Heard and her friends in the media use fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and a shield, depending on their needs. They have selected some of her sexual violence hoax facts, uh, quote facts, end of quote, as the sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. Do you see that? I do. Did you make that statement? I believe I did. Did you make that statement on behalf of Mr. Depp? 
instruct the witness not to answer that question on attorney-client privilege grounds. I accept the instruction. Why did you make the statement? Same instruction, same rationale. You can't answer the why question without disclosing attorney-client privilege, so I would instruct you not to answer. Were you representing Mr. Depp at the time you made this statement? And that, any, in any event, I'm going to instruct the witness not uh, to answer that question on attorney-client privilege grounds. I apologize. I actually didn't hear the question. I can agree with the instruction, but I probably should hear the question. <laughs> Fair enough. A Amy, could you read that back, please? Thank you. One moment. Were you representing Mr. Depp at the time you made this statement? I would instruct the witness not to answer on attorney-client privilege grounds. And thank you. I accept the instruction. Sorry for the repetition. Did you discuss this statement with Mr. Depp before making the statement? On the same grounds. Yeah, I accept the instruction. Did you discuss the statement with Mr. Depp after making the statement? Same instruction, same grounds. I accept the instruction. Was Mr. Depp aware either before or after that you were making this statement? Same instruction, same grounds. I accept the instruction. Did you make this statement with Mr. Depp's authorization or agreement? Same instruction, same grounds. I accept the instruction. <laughs> Was Mr. Depp aware that you were speaking with the press? Same instruction, same grounds. I accept the instruction. Did Mr. Depp ever ask you to retract or correct this statement? Same instruction, same grounds. I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp had asked you to retract or correct this statement, would you have retracted or corrected it? Same instruction, same grounds. I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp had told you that the statement was not correct, would you have corrected or retracted it? Same instruction, same grounds. I accept the instruction. Did you rely upon any statements or evidence from Mr. Depp in making this statement? Same instruction, same grounds. Yes, I accept the instruction. And if you could bring up exhibit number five. Mr. Waldman, I'm going to be asking you a question about a specific statement in this one. If you would like to read the article first, you are certainly at liberty to, and you could take control now and do that. Thank you, I will. It says, and uh, this is, I guess, I didn't uh, set the stage here. This was the Daily Mail published on July 3rd, 2020. And I'm going to now direct your attention to page nine. Depp's lawyer, Adam Waldman, said the various discrepancies prove that nothing heard and her friends said about the events of May 21, 2016 could be considered credible. Do you see that? She hear say. Then I'm going to direct your attention, Mr. Waldman, to the next statement. Quote, quite simply, this was an ambush, a hoax. They set Mr. Depp up by calling the cops, but the first attempt didn't do the trick. The officers came to the penthouses, thoroughly searched and interviewed, and left after seeing no damage to face or property. So Amber and her friends spilled a little wine and roughed the place up got their story straight under the direction of a lawyer and a publicist, and then placed a second call to 911. Do you see that statement? I do. Did you make those statements? There are two parts to what you've shown me. The first part didn't have quotation marks around it. And, and I'm not asking about that. I, okay. I'm sorry. Where it said nothing could be considered credible, that's not quoting me. The part right. with the quote marks, I believe I said that, yes. So starting from quite simply through nine one one, you stated all that. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Did you make this these statements on Mr. Depp's behalf? 
instruct the witness not to uh, answer on the grounds of attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Why did you make these statements? Same instruction, same reason. I accept the instruction. What were you trying to convey to the press in making these statements? Same instruction, same reason. I accept the instruction. Did you discuss this statement with Mr. Depp before making these statements? Same instruction, same reason. I accept the instruction. Did you discuss these statements with Mr. Depp following making these statements? Same instruction, same rationale. Yes, I accept the instruction. Was Mr. Depp aware either before or after that you were making these statements? Same instruction, same reason. I accept the instruction. Did you make these statements with Mr. Depp's authorization or agreement? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Was Mr. Depp aware you were speaking with the press? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Did Mr. Depp ever ask you to retract or correct these statements? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp had asked you to retract or correct these statements, would you have retracted or corrected them? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp had told you these statements were not correct, would you have corrected or retracted them? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Did you rely upon any statements or evidence from Mr. Depp in making these statements? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Mr. Waldman, I'm going to ask you to take a look at exhibit number six. This was another Daily Mail online, July 3, 2020. And if you would like to go ahead and, and uh, read the article, this would be a good time to do it. Thank you. Mr. Waldman, we were looking at Waldman exhibit number six, and it, it's the Daily Mail from July, just lost her there, but uh, July 3rd, 2020, and you were going to scroll through it, and I think we had some technical difficulties, so we took a break. Have you had an opportunity to review it, or do you need to now? Uh, no, um, Ms. Bredoff, I, 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 just, I just saw the screen for the first time, so may I read it now? Absolutely. I'm going to ask you to turn to what is the 11th page, the last page you just finished reading, and I'm going to direct your attention to some specific words that are attributed to you. Do you see that it says Depp's attorney Adam Waldman said? Right here. Okay. Do you see Depp's attorney Adam Waldman said? Do you see that there, Mr. Waldman? I do. Okay. And then I'm going to direct your attention to specifically the end of Ms. Hurd's abuse hoax against Johnny Depp. Do you see that? I do. Did you speak the words, quote, the end of Ms. Hurd's abuse hoax against Johnny Depp? I'm, I'm not sure. It, it appears as I look at this that there are quote marks around the statement, and that suggests that I did. I don't remember saying these particular words, but it appears so. Do you have any reason to believe that you did not say the end of Ms. Hurd's abuse hoax against Ms. Johnny Depp? No, I have no reason to, no reason to doubt that. What was, were you representing Mr. Depp at the time you made this statement? I'm going to refer to it as a statement. I'm taking specific words, Ms. Hurd's abuse hoax against Johnny Depp. But were you representing Mr. Depp at the time you made the statement that included Ms. Hurd's abuse hoax against Johnny Depp? Instruct the witness not to answer based on attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Why did you make this statement? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. What were you trying to convey to the press in making this statement? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Did you make the statement on Mr. Depp's behalf? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Did you discuss this statement with Mr. Depp before making the statement? Same. Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. 
Did you discuss this statement with Mr. Depp following making the statement? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Was Mr. Depp aware either before or after that you were making this statement? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Did you make this statement with Mr. Depp's authorization or agreement? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Was Mr. Depp aware you were speaking with the press? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Did Mr. Depp ever ask you to retract or correct this statement? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp had asked you to retract or correct the statement, would you have done so? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Mr. Waldman, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as deposition exhibit number 11. And if you want to take a moment, I'm going to try to make it. Mr. Waldman, I'm just going to ask you, it's just kind of two and a half pages. Go ahead and take the moment to review it. And then I'll ask you some questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I've read it. Okay. So directing your attention to exhibit number 11. So because there's a number of these, so maybe we can just clear it up right from the start. So we have conversation. If you look at the top, conversation, six messages, three parties over 209 minutes. And it has this first one. It has a date and a time and it has a telephone number. Do you see that? I do. Okay. And then it has some email messages or text messages. It looks like it starts with Keith Bishop. Do you know who Keith Bishop is? I do. And who is he? Keith Bishop is a publicist who lives in London. And for what publication? Oh, no, he's a publicist, he's an advisor on media. I see. Did you, at any time, did you or Mr. Depp ever employ Keith Bishop in any kind of public relations role? Mr. Waldman, I would instruct you not to answer any, I would instruct you not to answer the question to the extent that it would require you to disclose any communications you had with Johnny, either receiving or giving. I would not be able to answer without doing so. So I accept the instruction. Okay. And then Mr. Bishop says, and this is on 1-28-2020, Adam, I can confirm a meeting with the Mail Online for Monday, 17 February at 10 a.m. You see that? I do. So did you, in fact, have a meeting with the Mail Online on 17 February? I couldn't say sitting here now definitively that we met on Monday, the 17th of February, no. But I see this and it wouldn't surprise me if we had. And was Mr. Depp with you when you had the meeting? I believe Mr. Depp was with me when we had this meeting. And you were representing Mr. Depp at the time, correct? I would instruct the witness not to answer that question based on any client privilege. I accept the instruction. When did you obtain the audio tape that you're referencing in this text message? And I would instruct you not to answer the question to the extent it would require you to disclose any communications you had with Johnny, either receiving or giving. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for your arguments this morning. The case is submitted.